Hello ladies and gents. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a file using CorelDRAW for use with the Epilog Helix laser cutter. The first thing you need to do is create your cutting file in Adobe Illustrator and save that file as an SVG. Put that SVG file on a USB thumb drive and then plug that thumb drive into the Windows computer that's next to the laser cutter. Once you've plugged in your USB thumb drive, open up CorelDRAW and with CorelDRAW on the screen, as you can see here, in the top left hand corner, click on the open icon and then from the left hand side panel of locations, choose the USB drive. Now choose your SVG file. You can see here I have one file on the USB drive called face keyring and the file type is an SVG. You can double click this click it once and then hit open. Now we can see the cutting file has appeared on the canvas in CorelDRAW. This canvas is 600 millimeters by 400 millimeters in size. That's the size of the cutting plate on the laser cutter. And you can see that the cutting file itself is quite big. It's much bigger than the file I created in Illustrator. This means that it has lost the size settings and I'll have to fix this in a moment. But the first thing I'm going to do is prepare the colored lines and engravings to make sure that they'll work with the laser cutter. So if I click on the black eyes of this face, you can see in the outline section in the properties panel in the top right hand side of the screen, the outline size is set to none. And that's fine because there is no stroke or outline color because it's just a black filled shape. If I click on the red line, you can see that the stroke size or the outline size is 2.667 point. This actually needs to be set to hairline so that the laser cutter can vector cut or vector engrave it. If you have anything other than hairline, it will use the slower raster engraving method and it won't cut through your material. Rather than click on all of the red parts individually, what I'll do is I'll do a search for all of the red bits and replace them all with one click. To do that, go to Edit, Find and Replace, Replace Objects. Select Replace a Color and click Next. In the Find tab, click on the color bar and change CMYK to RGB. Then change the numbers in the red, green and blue channels. Red should be 255, green should be 0, and blue should be 0. This will give us pure RGB red. When you've done that, press Enter. For Replace With, change that color using the same method to RGB, and then change the red channel to 255, the green channel to 0, and the blue channel to 0, and press Enter. For replace colors used as, select outlines. Now click finish. In the find and replace window, click find all. Now change the outline to hairline. And all of the red in that file is now set to hairline. I can close this menu, click on the individual pieces, and we can see that they are all set to hairline. I can repeat that process for the blue sections, but since we only have two, I'll just click on the mouth, I'll change that to hairline separately, and then I'll click on the welcome, and I'll change that. So now, we just need to resize the file. Make sure you've clicked on the pick tool in the top left hand of the screen, and drag a box around your file. In the top left hand side of the screen, we've got the width and the height. You can see the width is just over 173 millimeters and the height is just over 184. In Illustrator, these numbers are different. You should drag a box around your file in Illustrator and in the properties panel, look at the width and height values. The width and height values in Illustrator are 65 and 69.069. So I'm simply going to type over these numbers to change them back to what they should be. 65 for the width, 
and 69.069 for the height. Once you've done that, press enter. So just remember to check your width and height in Illustrator and change the values as needed. Now, click on the pick tool again, click on your file and move it to the top left of the canvas because this is where the laser is going to start and we want to maximize the use of material. So you want to keep everything to the left so you can reuse more of your material for other projects. If you cut something out of the middle of a piece of wood or a piece of acrylic, you're going to waste most of that material. So lay out your file in a sensible way. Now the file is ready to send to the laser cutter. To do that, click File, Print. With the print window open, click Preferences. In the laser cutter properties window, there are lots of settings. You don't need to change most of these. All you need are the settings for raster. So the raster setting in the top right hand side of the screen will change the speed to 75 by clicking on the plus or minus buttons or just dragging the slider to the value that we need. And we'll leave the power at 50. Once you've done the raster settings, click on the color mapping tab. Now we're going to set the speed and power of the laser for the red and blue sections of our file. To do that, turn color mapping on by putting a check mark in the color mapping box. Turn raster off and leave vector and air assist on. Now for 2.6 millimeter plywood, I'm going to use a cutting speed of 40 and I will use a power setting of 85. With those numbers set, you can click on the three arrows and you can see now we've sent those settings to that color bar and the speed and power are both set to 85. Click on the blue color and now we'll set the speed and power for the blue. Remember to turn raster off and leave vector and air assist on. Change the speed to 100 and the power to 25. Then you can click the three arrows to send those settings to the menu in the right hand side of the screen. Check that you're happy with the speed and power settings. So red speed 40, power 85, blue speed 100, power 25. If you're happy with those settings, click the OK button. In the print window, simply click apply and then make sure you have turned the laser cutter on and click print to send your file to the laser cutter. If you have another file that you want to cut, just repeat the process by going back to the open icon and then running through the same steps to prepare your project for another piece that you've created using Illustrator.